So this video was supposed to be about dealing with rejection, but it's kind of taken on a life of its own. It's morphed into something else and it really ends up being about, you know, it's hard to imagine a time when these things didn't exist. How did people meet up without instant messaging, Snapchat or Tinder? But of course, back in the 80s, we didn't need Tinder because we had Tingles. But Tingles wasn't a thing. Tingles was a place. Tingles was this large rectangular hall. One end you had a stage, the other end you had this entrance doorway. And in the center, that's where the DJ was. All the boys stood on this side of the hall and all the girls, they hung out over here. Again, all in their little clusters. All the dancing took place in here and here. All good so far. Then the slow set would start. I hate it. Slow sets. So here was the problem. I had zero confidence with girls. You see, I went to an old boys' school, so I hadn't a clue how to talk Gotta to girls. Then one Saturday night, I saw this girl just hanging with her friends, and I can't quite put my finger on it. There was something about her. I had to ask her out. What I should have done was taken the direct route across the floor, but I didn't. I went around. Quick bypass around. It was like this air traffic controller in my head was going, aboard, aboard, aboard. I couldn't do it. I completely wimped out. So the next day, a friend of mine called Aiden stopped by my house. Actually, hang on a second. So I have here a picture of Aiden somewhere. Aiden helpfully suggested that the following Saturday night, that he could ask her out on my behalf. And, and, I, and, I, and I do not know, to, to this day, I have no idea how, in my head, in that moment, that actually sounded like a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> following Saturday night came, and sure enough, Sinead was there. And true to his word, Aiden makes a beeline across the hall and I can see him whispering something in her ear. And then he looks across the hall and points over towards me. And she looks over his shoulder and I can see her somewhat squinting. And she just shakes her head. Oh. Well, undeterred, he moves on to the next girl beside her, says something to her, points over towards me, and she shakes her head. Ha! He's on a roll now. So he goes over to the third girl, says something to her, points across the hall at me, she shakes her head. He's not bothered. He doesn't care, it's not him. He's just got a bad product. <sighs> Suddenly, this doesn't seem like such a great idea after all. I just wanted the ground to open up and swallow me. You see, he was emotionally detached from the process. On the other hand, I was very much emotionally attached to the outcome. Eternity later. I'm at a party at a friend's house and who do I see? Sinead. And she's as gorgeous as ever. Me? I'm back that night in Tingles. Hands are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. And I tell the story of that night in Tingles to a friend of mine and he falls around the place laughing. Boy, you feckin' idiot. She wasn't rejecting you. She couldn't see you. She's half blind and she just doesn't like to wear her glasses when she goes out at night. She's happy to dance with any guy who asks her out to dance, even if she doesn't fancy him. If you had just asked, Come on, he says, I'll introduce you. Unfortunately, while she talked very easily with me, I wasn't getting the feeling that there was any chemistry there for her. To her, I was just another guy at a party. I needed something to get her attention. Nothing that would scare her off. I've got a plan so cunning, you could put a tail on it and call it a weasel. <laughs> Paris, the most romantic city on the planet. If I could leverage the power of that brand, maybe I could make that all-important connection. So I sent her a postcard from Paris and it didn't need to say very much. The card was the message, not the content. Three weeks later. I'm back home and I bump into a mutual friend who informs me that the postcard has had the desired effect. 
But more importantly, by sheer coincidence, Sinead is hosting a party at her house on Saturday night and guess who's invited? Yes! That party took place on Saturday, September 27th, 1986. And if Facebook had been around back then, that's the night I would have changed my relationship status from single to in a relationship. And here's the interesting bit for me. Everything of significance in my life over the past 32 years has hinged on that decisive moment. The experience I've had, the family I have, the friends I have, just, just about everything. And in a weird kind of way, right now, in fact, you'd be doing something else Maybe that's just reading email or watching a different video, but I probably wouldn't have made this video. I wouldn't be doing this right now. And that's kind of mind blowing to me that, that those tiny moments that you have, those, those momentary decisions in your life that maybe took place decades ago, have these ripple effects that you just can't comprehend. They're way too complex and mind blowing. But when you strip it right back, all of it, all of it, only one thing counts. Thirty-two years in sixteen seconds, and life can feel a lot like that. It just flies by, and before you know it, you're going to end up in one of two places. You're either going to end up enjoying all the rewards of your hard work, sacrifices, and difficult decisions, or you're going to end up in a state of constant anger, resentment, and regret because of your inaction, poor choices, and indecision. The choice is yours but it's always a choice. Thanks for watching.